We're talking about everyday carry items and these elements here come from what I call my personal element of my, pers of my everyday carry system. Um, three, three, uh, three elements, a wallet, a cell phone, and a watch. Um, let's talk about them one at a time. I've worn a watch forever, uh, literally more than 50 years, 55 years. I probably got my first watch when I was five or six, something like that. Uh, and I've just always had one. Wear it in the same place, my, uh, my left arm, and I always carry it with the face out. Um, not sure why, but that's, that's how I do it. And so if I wonder what time it is, I know where to look. The watch, however, has changed over the years from a, a typical watch to, uh, during my military years, I had a, a Seiko diver watch that I liked. Um, it was a self-winding. Um, it's only claim... <laughs> It's only claim to fame for me. A solid watch, wonderful watch. Still have it tucked away in a drawer. Um, it provi it uh, did once upon a time protect me from uh, shrapnel uh, and took a chunk out of the face. And uh, honestly, it uh, it's worked since then. But once I got home, I um, I got a new watch and I just kind of keep that as a keepsake. Uh, but anyway, my current watch, uh, going through a couple versions of electronic watches, is a um, Casio Pathfinder. Again, keeping in mind this is part of a everyday carry system and broadening that a little bit, it's part of a survival system. Uh, the watch needs to be more than just a watch in my opinion. And the Casio Pathfinder fits a lot of squares that I'm looking for uh, when I'm in the wilderness, uh, whether I'm backpacking, whether I'm just camping, whether I'm canoeing, uh, there are things that I want to know that this does a good job of providing me. The first, of course, is the time. And it's unique from the point of view that um, it is a digital watch and it has all the stuff that goes along with that. I can set multiple alarms, some of which I use, although I find I use my cell phone more for alarms than I do my watch. Um, but then it has their ABC switch. The first is their altimeter switch. If I push this button, it switches to altimeter mode. And right now it thinks at my, uh, my office I'm at 940 feet. That's actually pretty accurate. The, uh, the altitude at this particular spot is 950. But this is an altimeter based on an internal barometer. So if you're going out into the wilderness and you're depending on this thing, what you need to do is make sure you accurately set your barometer before you go. Now I find I do not do that. I always have a GPS with me so I can use that for altitude and I'm much closer than I am with this. Um, I usually find that this thing is within about 100 feet, uh, which in 99% in of the cases that's more than enough. Uh, if you're landing an airplane, of course, it, uh, <laughs> it gets a lot more critical. But for backpacking, for canoeing, for camping, for general wilderness survival, um, an altimeter is just fine like it is. The next piece works in conjunction with that, and that's a barometer. The idea behind a barometer is not necessarily what is the current barometric pressure, but if you notice on this watch, there's a little graph that's right here. That shows the barometric pressure for the last 24 hours. Uh, each little pixel is worth two hours. And where this becomes important to me is if I'm on a pack trip or a canoe trip and all of a sudden I notice the barometer is dropping like a rock, I know that something's going to change. The weather's changing. I can marry that with uh, the current wind, the current wind direction. I can marry that with the clouds that I'm seeing. And I can begin to make decisions uh, about where I am in my trip or my trek uh, do I need to start to make camp? Do I need to hustle a little bit? How far I, am I from camp or my destination for the day? It just kind of gives me a heads up of what's going on and where I'm going and what I'm doing. Uh, and I found a lot of value with it, with it in the, over the years, uh, particularly again on pack trips and canoe trips. The third button is a C and that's a compass. Um, I've just never been without a compass for, for years and years and years. Um, and I mean, we're talking like 40 years I've had a compass of one kind or another in my pocket. Uh, sometimes that turns out to be a, um, a little button compass that was on the, uh, the watch band. 
Uh, I have at times carried a compass and if I am in a wilderness setting, um, I do have a, uh, a compass that I always carry around my neck in addition to this. Um, it's just <laughs> it's just what I do. So there's a lot of value in having a compass in your pocket. Um, some other features uh, features of this watch that I really like, it is solar powered. Uh, so no mo longer do I have to wonder whether I wound it, do I have to wonder if I flop my arms around enough that day to keep it wound, or do I wonder uh, I'm leaving on a trip, when was the last time I changed my batteries, do I need to put a new battery in it? Uh, it charges automatically, um, and I've never had this thing come up short on juice. Uh, and the last element, if you look just to the left here, let me see if I can tip it just right. You see this little rectangle or this little triangle pointing out off the side. That says that it is locked on and synchronized to um, the nearest, uh, in this case happens to be Boulder, Colorado, time system, so that it updates every day at midnight, so I'm, I'm accurate to a second. Um, that may or may not be important. Um, I just think it's cool and I like it. When I teach my wilderness survival classes though, there are some things I teach specifically if you're lost and a watch comes in handy for that. Um, a lot of the, the people that I teach are scouts, young kids. Um, a lot of them I teach, they've not been in the wilderness before. And if you've never been lost in the wilderness, um, I, I can't explain it to you how, how much you can, how easy it is to panic how easy it is to kind of lose focus. So I try to teach them some basic things and the first thing I teach them is just to stop, don't move, just stay where you are. And then what I want them to do is signal every 15 minutes. Uh, I want them to do some sort of signal and we uh, ensure that every kid that goes on a pack trip or a canoe trip has two things around his neck. One is a compass and one is a whistle. Uh, I want them to blow on the whistle three times and then I want them to repeat that sequence three times and I want them to do it um, every 15 minutes on the hour, the quarter hour, the half hour, the 45 minute mark. That's just an agreement that we make before we go into the wilderness or that I encourage my kids to make with their partners before they go into the wilderness. So if they get separated, people know when to listen. And from that point of view, it's important to have a watch that stays accurate. Um, this has been a, a nice change from the previous watch that I had in that they've mounted the sensors on the outside. And what I've noticed is it's the, uh, the temperature that measures the air is not affected by body temperature with this. So the, the, uh, the temperature that's on the outside uh, is very accurate. And that's one more piece of information you can have when you're making a decision about what kind of weather is coming uh, is there a front coming? Do I need to get off the water? Do I need to get off the trail? Do I need to make camp? Um, can I stretch this a little longer? It just gives you information that you can all dial together uh, and it's easy to carry with you and have as your everyday carry. Again, you're not worried about the content of your everyday carry system unless things are going bad. And if they're going bad, that's not the time to say, golly, I wish I would have put my watch on today or I wish I would have stuck that fire kit in my pocket. Um, it's too late then. I have a wallet and I'm using that to kind of prop up the phone so there's, the glare isn't so bad. Uh, in my wallet, there's a couple things that I think are real important. Obviously, if you're a carry person, you can do, um, an item you certainly need to have in there is your carry permit. Now, I've got a couple of them. I've got one for Iowa and I've got one for Arizona, which I think right now gives me carry permission up in uh, 40 different states. Uh, thing to keep in mind with that, though, is that the rules change from state to state. And sometimes within the state, it can, ca it can change from county to county or city to city. It's your responsibility to know where you're going and what the rules are. But always, obviously, have your carry permits with you and the wallet is where I carry mine. Along with that, uh, everybody somewhere in there has a credit card or two tucked away. Uh, the ones I carry depending on where I'm going. Uh, if I'm going on a long, prolonged trip, two, three weeks, a month, something like that, I usually carry one with a larger balance uh, in case I need it. If it's just around my local area, uh, I carry credit cards with the smallest balance that I can. 
Uh, it's not difficult to adjust those with your bank, uh, and I would encourage you to do that. Uh, uh, you, know, you hear all sorts of horror stories about stolen credit cards and all of a sudden lots of uh, dollars being pumped onto them, and it's just nice to, to kind of keep a handle on that. And of course, the other thing I have in my wallet is uh, my little magnifying glass as part of my fire starting kit. I'll always carry cash. Uh, again, that depends on where you're going, what you're doing, how long the trip is, and that kind of thing. Uh, but again, keeping with the tradition that this is part of an everyday carry um, and you're using it in an environment where things aren't working well, it may be that the automatic colors aren't working. It may be that the internet's down so that they can't accept your credit card. Um, you need, may need to to buy five bucks worth of gas to get home and um, and everything's down and you're, you're stuck with what you have in your pocket. Uh, so always carry some cash in your wallet. Uh, and again the amount for me depends on where I'm going and what I'm doing. If I'm on a two, three, four week trip uh, the amount of cash I carry is significantly more than if I'm just around my area uh, during the day uh, and I know that I'll be home in the evening and, and typically the amount of fuel I have in my vehicle is enough to get me from point A to port B. The final element is um, the cell phone. I'm using my wallet to uh, prop it up to see if I can keep the glare off it. These things have changed so much. Uh, honestly, I go back to the days of the, uh, the cell phones that looked like lunch boxes. Uh, that moved into bag phones, uh, that moved into bricks, that moved into the the big leap in my mind was the StarTac phone from Motorola that uh, began to look like the uh, the old Star Trek communicator and in uh, that particular format is still with us today although it's quickly giving away to this type of device in front of you. This happens to be a Google Nexus One and it's running the current operating system uh, which is called Gingerbread 2.3. It is the perfect device for all sorts of things for what I do. Uh, in my business it gives me access to all my client files. I can actually drive my computer desktop from this thing if I need to. Uh, it has a great calendaring system for reminders of, of where I'm going and what I'm doing. Uh, but then over and above that, it has a, um, a tremendous system in it that you can use for navigation. Uh, their map system as well as other types of software that you can buy uh, so that you, you literally have a GPS with you all the time. Now there's some caveats to that. Um, Google Maps, I've noticed lately, has changed to a caching system so that they can cache maps if you're without cell service. Uh, the disadvantage with that, though, is that they haven't migrated their application to the storage card, to the SD card. It still sucks up primary phone memory. Uh, and I've actually turned off that caching feature because it's really chewing up my memory space. Uh, but there are other options as well where if you want to cache maps, you can. Uh, in a wilderness environment, I wouldn't take my cell phone typically. Uh, I have a Garmin, in fact I have two or three Garmin GPS's that I would take in the wilderness, load them up with the maps in the area that I'm in, uh, download my, my uh, route into the system as well and that's what I would carry in that environment. However, for every day, uh, let's say you're, uh, you want to know everything from where's the nearest gas station, to you've been involved in a shooting event, uh, you've used this to dial 911, uh, you've told the police who you are, you've given them a description, you've let them know what you look like so they can separate the attacker from you. Um, there's, it's very easy to roll into a mode where you use the camera in this thing or where, whether, where you use the video camera so you can just let that roll and record audio in the background. Obviously, they ha also have audio recorders that you can go do on here as well. Uh, and there are some applications that you can get that will dump the video simultaneously to a storage site. So that if uh, there are some police uh, departments that frown on a phone being used for that type of thing. Um, to be honest, I tough luck uh, if you can store the stuff uh, online as it's being taken. 
Uh, it's for your defense, and, and I don't really care how they feel about it. You have a right to record any event that's going on to protect yourself. Of course, the, the other thing is this also comes with a storage card. I happen to have a 32 gigabyte, gigabyte card in here. I use that to store my music. Um, I do use this for photos. Um, you know, the type that I'd used to use in, <laughs> let's go back to the Kodak Instamatic days, that kind of camera. Um, it's got a five megapixel camera in it, which is a, a very good camera, good, more than good enough for eight by 10 photos. Uh, pretty good range of lighting. And um, so I use it for that. But with a storage card, you can begin to do other things as well. For example, on this, I also have uh, the Army Survival Guide. I uh, downloaded it as a PDF and I stuck it on there. Uh, I've got uh, manuals for all my weapon systems on this device as well. Uh, you can go to virtually any, any manufacturer and download the PDF of the weapon system that you're using. Um, I have links to different types of first aid as well as a number of military and commercial uh, first aid PDF files on here that Again, what you're trying to do is give yourself information so that uh, if everything has just fallen apart on your hand, in, in your hand and you really don't have time to think things through all that well, it gives you one more backstop of data. Uh, and then, of course, it does all the basic things. It does uh, the telephone, <laughs> which I suppose is its primary purpose. Uh, does all the texting. Um, lets me work with a couple different email accounts all the way from my professional accounts up through um, you know general accounts that I have. Uh, it's just a nice device uh, all the way to uh, a flashlight. Let's say you, you just need a flashlight quick. You're in a motel room. The lights went out. You need to navigate your way out of the building. Uh, it turns the um, the flash that they have for the camera into a flashlight. It's a great tool um, and a lot of these now are, are literally free uh, with some of the plans that you have. Uh, one cautionary note if you start to use it for a bunch of things where you're really sucking a lot of data, uh, Netflix, uh, Pandora for music, that kind of stuff, most um, carriers have now gone to caps where you pay for what you get uh, so maybe it's two gigabytes a month is the basic one uh, and then they go up from there. Very few of them anymore are offering unlimited data and unlimited text. So to keep that in mind. Uh, it's neither here nor there. It's where the market is going. But, uh, but as an overall tool, uh, it just needs to be part of your everyday system. So there you see my personal stuff. These, this is what I call the personal element, uh, the wallet, the cell phone with all its associated software and then a good watch on my arm and that is the last element in what I define as my everyday carry system. Again I hope this uh, this video makes sense to you uh, why I chose these tools what I'm looking for out of the tools uh, that kind of thing. Again please make any comments that you that you can uh, I'm learning hopefully we're all learning from each other uh, we all have reasons for the choices we make, and we all have reasons for the decisions we make. Uh, the more we share that with each other, the, uh, the better they get. Thanks much, and we'll talk to you in the next video.